Welcome to my second video in the series about building a radio controlled sailing bottle of a Morris M36. In this video I'm going to be talking about how I designed and built the keel and rudder. This picture shows the hull with the keel and the rudder on. You'll notice that relative to the size of the hull, the keel and the rudder are somewhat exaggerated. I'd like to talk a little bit about why that is now. When you decrease the size of a boat, the loads on the sail decrease as the square of the decrease in size. So this is a 1 12th scale model. So the sail loads will be decreased by a factor of 144 for a given wind speed. The same will happen with the keel uh, in terms of its hydrodynamic loading as the boat moves through the water. However, because this model is substantially smaller than a real boat, it will have a much lower speed that it operates at. The real boat has a hull speed uh, which is approximately seven knots. This boat's hull speed, which is calculated from the waterline length, is more like two knots. So even though the hydrodynamic forces scale the same way for the sails and the keel, because the boat cannot go as fast, the absolute magnitude of the hydrodynamic forces on the keel are much smaller than they would be for a real boat for a similar uh, wind speed because the boat won't be going as fast. So that means that to get the same effect you need to increase the size of the keel, the foil area, and you also have to make the keel deeper so that the ballast effect of the uh, lead ballast on the keel is greater and will keep the boat more upright. In order to determine just how big I should make the keel and rudder, what I did was calculated the wind loading that would be required to bring the boat up to hull speed. And that determined that this boat, unless I put a really radical keel on it, is not going to be able to sail in winds much more than about 8 to 10 knots. And that that sort of wind speed will take the boat right up to its max, to its hull speed, maybe a little bit beyond, and any more wind than that will simply heal the boat. So I calculated a keel area that would max that would provide a reasonable compromise between the hydrodynamic forces of the keel at slightly more than hull speed and the appearance of the keel. One thing I wanted to do is keep the appearance of the underbody of this boat reasonably close to what a real boat would look like. Now it is exaggerated because of the factors that I mentioned, but I didn't want to go as far as you would with a normal radio control model, which would simply have a very deep keel fin, probably just a flat plate of aluminum with a bulb of ballast at the bottom and that keel fin for this size boat might be as much as 18 inches. So I didn't want to do that so I had to do a compromise and so this is what I came up with. In order to maximize hydrodynamic forces on, on the keel and on the rudder I decided to use actual foils rather than just flat plates. So I built the keel and the rudder using NACA foils. The rudder is the same form factor as the real rudder on this boat. It's just deeper and a bit has a longer cord and the keel is also deeper and has a somewhat longer cord than on the uh, real boat. I'll get back to the ballast a little bit later. I built the keel in two parts, the fin, which has the NACA foil shape, and the ballast bulb. This picture shows two views of the keel fin. 
Uh, on the right hand side is the top view of the fin and you can see the uh, NACA foil shape there. I chose the foil shape I did after reading uh, through a number of my naval architecture books and to be honest I don't remember the specific foil that I actually ended up with uh, since I did do this 13 years ago and uh, my computer records of what I did are long gone. But anyway, suffice it to say that I chose what seemed like an appropriate NACA foil and then I set about building the fin. To build the fin I made a center plate which is a sheet of 1 16th inch balsa wood that has the shape of the keel and and also has a stub sticking out the top of it for attaching it to the hull. I took that piece of balsa wood and I laminated it with two layers of six ounce fiberglass cloth on each side all set in epoxy. When that was done I cut out molds for the desired foil shape and glued them up down the length of the uh, keel stub and then planked the outside surface of the keel with 1 16th by 3 16th balsa planks. When I finished doing that I sanded it fair and fiberglass the outside again with two more layers of 6 ounce fiberglass set in epoxy. After I finished doing that I opened up the bottom of the keel stub up for about an inch and filled it with thickened epoxy. I did that in order to give myself something to attach the bulb to. What I came up with was a very sturdy keel fin. Uh, later on I built the bulb. I built the rudder in a similar fashion except that I did not use a balsa wood uh, center plane for it. Instead what I did was I took my rudder shaft which is a piece of 3 16 inch diameter 316 stainless steel rod and I cut out a piece of 316 stainless steel sheet to the shape of the rudder and then I silver soldered that plate to the back of the rudder post. When I'd done that I cut out molds for the desired foil shape glued them onto the plate and planked the uh, rudder on the outside and then fiberglassed it. So I have a good sturdy rudder uh, that will where I won't have to worry about the shaft turning in the outer form of the rudder. And once I finished fiberglassing these things I uh, filled the weave of the fiberglass and fared it smooth to get my final keel and rudder. In order to attach the keel fin to the hull I cut a slot in the bottom of the hull along the mark I had put inside the hull where the keel was supposed to go. I then slid the uh, tab on the top of my keel fin through that uh, slot, lined the keel up so that it was in the correct orientation perpendicular to a tangent to the hull form at that spot and proceeded to fiberglass the uh, keel stub into position by putting uh, several layers of uh, fiberglass cloth on each side of the stub. After the epoxy set I fared around the bottom of the stub uh, inside and outside the hull using vinyl ester fairing compound to make sure that I wouldn't have introduced any leaks. If you look at this picture you can see the stub where it comes up through the bottom of the hull. It's been glassed in at this point and the greenish material around the base of the stub is the vinyl ester fairing compound. In order to further strengthen the keel to hull attachment I cut balsa wood floors that I fiberglassed in on either side of the keel stub where it extended through the hull and uh, 
as you can see in this picture, I made up three floors. Uh, although it doesn't look like it here, they're equally spaced. These floors provide additional stiffening to keep the keel from moving side to side as the boat heels. In order to attach the rudder to the hull, I had to uh, build a rudder tube that the shaft would pass through and the tube would extend above the waterline so that they wouldn't provide a leak point. To make the rudder tube, I waxed up a piece of my 316 stainless steel rod and saturated some carbon fiber cloth with epoxy and wrapped it tightly around the rod. Once the epoxy set, I pulled the carbon fiber tube off of the rod, trimmed it to length, drilled a hole in the hull at the location where the rudder was supposed to be, put the rudder through the tube and pass the tube through the hull with a little bit sticking out the bottom of the boat, oriented the rudder in the proper orientation and fiberglassed the tube into the hull. In order to strengthen it up, I put knees on all four sides of it made out of balsa wood that were fiberglassed to the hull and to the rudder tube. And that was the installation of the rudder. I used carbon fiber to give me a relatively low friction but tight fitting surface inside the tube so that the rudder would turn easily uh, but it wouldn't leak significantly through the tube when the boat was healed. The final part of the keel that I made was the keel bulb. However, I waited until I'd completed uh, the bulk of the boat in order to do that because the keel bulb which is lead ballast, uh, had to be of an appropriate weight to make the boat float on its waterline. So once I'd built all of the major components of the boat, I weighed them to determine the weight of the boat, and then I calculated the volume of the boat below the waterline, including the keel stub and rudder, and from that volume calculated the weight of water displaced and then set the ballast weight equal to the difference in the displacement of the hull and the weight of the components that made the hull. Next step was to design a keel bulb that had an appropriate weight. So I know the density of lead. I used my CAD program to draw up a keel bulb, calculated the volume of the bulb, adjusted the displacement slightly and adjusted the weight, made a few minor changes to the volume to compensate for that, and then had my design for the keel bulb. I built a wooden model of the keel bulb that would fit on the bottom of the keel fin and use that to cast a lead keel bulb. Uh, I simply used the wooden model to make a plaster of Paris mold, melted up a batch of lead in an old soup can and poured it into the mold to make my keel bulb. I attached the keel bulb to the keel fin with two uh, quarter inch stainless steel screws into the thickened epoxy at the bottom of the fin and fared everything over and had the completed keel attached to the boat with an appropriate ballast weight so that in theory the finished boat would float on its waterline. Okay, that's how I built the keel and rudder. Hope you found it interesting. And the next installment in this series will be how I built the deck.